Hey guys, my name is Dr. Sam. Today I wanted to talk about the evidence for social distancing, especially in regards to COVID-19. Now, just so you know, I am not being paid to talk about this. What I'm going to say is just my personal opinion as a medical doctor. However, you are entitled to your own opinion and I would strongly encourage you to do your own research on this topic so that you can make up your own mind. I will link the references that I've used in the description below. Now, I don't know what your personal situation is in regards to being in lockdown, as everyone is under a lot of strain, but let me tell you about what is going on in my home country, New Zealand. We have to remain at home in our social bubbles. We can leave our house if we need to go to the supermarket, pharmacy, if you are an essential worker, or to exercise. You cannot go swimming, hunting, tramping, or do anything that may put extra strain on emergency services. You cannot talk to anyone outside of your social bubble at a distance of less than two meters, which includes family, friends, and coworkers. And lately, when I've gone for a walk or run, I notice people don't even want to make eye contact and they often cross the street or act panicked and move away from you like you have leprosy. The first time I went to the supermarket after we went into lockdown three weeks ago, I saw someone wearing a gas mask. Now, why would someone want to wear a gas mask at a supermarket? I'd presume that it's either a practical joke or it's because they are scared and think that they might die from an infection that is hanging around in the ear. I don't blame that person for feeling scared as most people don't understand what the medical risks are to them. As we're bombarded every day by the, by the media about how dangerous it is when people don't practice social distancing. So I decided to look into this myself as I wanted to understand what scientific literature is behind social distancing. Before I get into the interesting stuff, I thought I'd quickly recap on how infectious diseases used to be dealt with when there was no treatment available for a disease. One word, quarantine. The practice of separating the diseased from the healthy has been around for a very long time. In the Old Testament, for instance, rules existed for isolating lepers or people who have leprosy. It wasn't until the Black Death of the 14th century where Venice established the first formal system of quarantine where they made ships lay at anchor for 40 days before landing. Should we quarantine people with COVID-19? Leslie! Go home. You're sick. I'm not sick. It's just allergies. Come on, guys. Just let me in there. No, you can't come in you're here. You're not coming in. Now, Leslie, you, you look tired and you're all sweaty. You look tired and you're all sweaty all the time. What's your excuse? You want to go there, Jerry? No. One of the problems with COVID-19 is the fact that seemingly there are many, many people who have tested positive for it, but are completely asymptomatic, meaning they have no symptoms and don't go on to develop symptoms. Apparently up to 30% of people with coronavirus are asymptomatic and never show symptoms. This figure may be much higher, even as high as 80%, as there have never been any studies comparing rates of positive tests in a control population. Therefore, it's not as easy to quarantine individuals with COVID as many are completely well, and unlike leprosy where people mostly have symptoms. On the flip side, there are no loss lasting disfigurements or health concerns with coronavirus for the average person. Once you are recovered, you are back to normal. I made another video on how lethal COVID-19 actually is. If you're interested, please check it out in the description. Yeah. <laughs> So what's the science behind social distancing? There's one systematic review article that looked at how effective social distancing is in reducing the spread of influenza. It looked at 12 modeling and three epidemiological studies. Unfortunately, all three epidemiological studies were highly biased and therefore the results are not usable. And if you have 
any familiarity with computer modeling, you'll understand how highly unreliable these results can be, is you have to plug in hundreds, if not thousands of variables, and the, and the end result can be manipulated by changing the variables that are included in the study. Examples of recent computer modeling gone wrong is from the Imperial College of London, who estimated the risk of infection and death from coronavirus to be 131 times greater than it actually has turned out to be. In this systematic review, the modeling studies support social distancing in non-healthcare workplaces, but I am highly dubious that these models play out in reality. There have been no observational studies in real human beings to determine if social distancing works. Please let me emphasize that I am not talking about the evidence for quarantine or self-quarantine, which is different to social distancing and physical distancing. Prior to COVID-19, social distancing was a term that was hardly used or advised by doctors, and now everyone seems to be an expert on this. And the definition of what constitutes a safe distance changes by the day. Leslie. No, back in your tent, Sticky. What is the evidence for wearing facial masks? To summarize, all the studies have only looked at healthcare workers and mask use. Specifically, if healthcare workers wear masks, does it prevent them getting sick from an infectious disease? Despite widespread use of masks in healthcare workers, there is very little cl clinical evidence that these prevent infection with airborne infectious diseases. And what was quite disappointing is there was a really good study called the RESPECT study that was originally going to answer how well do respirators, aka masks, prevent airborne infectious diseases. But then they changed the outcomes when it was published and only compared two different types of masks and asked which one was better. Unfortunately, we don't have one study looking at whether wearing masks and gloves in the community does anything to prevent catching respiratory infections. What I personally believe is far more troubling is social isolation and the generalized suspicion we have for our neighbors, our friends, coworkers, and strangers in the street. Many studies have been done on social isolation and long-term it increases the risk of premature death. While short periods of isolation can cause increased anxiety or depression that start within days, we are social creatures that have evolved over millennia to be in family structures and groups and we rely on that interaction with other human beings. I believe more is needed than just social media, which can never replace a cup of coffee in person with a friend. Now, I'm not asking you to break the law in regards to social distancing and wearing masks. I totally hear you. Um, I also don't like what you're saying. So if you say no, I will start a fire in the bathroom. But please think about what the emotional cost of these measures are as a society. I believe there is no evidence for social distancing, and in time we will be able to compare real-world infection rates and deaths in countries like Sweden and Denmark, who have very different policies in place on social distancing. Like I said in my original COVID video, I still believe the death rates from coronavirus will be similar to the ordinary flu, and most countries have overreacted so that their cures are much worse than the disease. As always, please give this video a like if you found it helpful, hit the subscribe button for new videos every single week, and hit the bell to get notified when I post new videos on Tuesdays. Please let me know in the comments what you want to learn more about, and feel free to check out some of my other videos on infections. Thanks for watching.